In this video, I'm going to cover the process of becoming a doctor, which by the way, are dentists as well. Um, so I'm going to go through everything you have to do through high school, college, uni, uh, to get into dental school, to get into medical school. And then at the end, when you become a doctor, uh, if I keep looking to the left, it's because I've got my script there. Yes, I write scripts. I'm very professional. My background may not be very professional, but I am. So if you don't know, I'm currently a dental student. I uh, finished my second year, going into third year, uh, starting September, obviously. And yeah, I'm going to run through my journey, my experiences, what you need to do uh, to get to the position I am and further. Or to get into medical school because I'm in dental school because uh, dentists are better. Okay, so let's start off at high school. So at high school, uh, most future dental and medical students are usually top of their class. Uh, I emphasis on most because um, I wasn't. I was usually only good at maths. But even through like year seven to year nine, if they're not top, Usually year 10 and especially year 11, they're the ones getting the 8s, 9s, 7s lowest. Personally, I got two fives, a couple of sixes, a couple of sevens and like two eights. But that might seem like good at GCSEs. In uni, I have the worst GCSEs. All my friends are all 9s, all 8s. Everyone got minimum 7s at uni. So like, yeah, at 15 years old, you got to make sure you smash your GCSEs um, to get into dental school. Dental and medical school, the students there, they're all A and A star students. So they've all got eights, they've all got nines. It's just how it is. Well, now when you hear, oh, someone's got all nines, it may seem like a shock. Oh, they're so smart. In dental school, someone says they got all nines. It's like, oh, nice. So does he. So does she. <laughs> Usually it's people who want to go into medicine, dentistry, know that they need to do well in their GCSEs, so they're top of the class. Or people who are very smart, they get the sevens and eights. And then when they're in college, they're like, okay, with these grades, what can I do? Medicine, dentistry. So for medicine dentistry, unis actually care about GCSEs. A lot of other courses, they don't care about GCSEs. In high school, teachers might say GCSEs are very important. Unis look at it. Mostly, it's either Oxford, Cambridge look at it, or like LSE, you sell like top unis. Or medicine dentistry, they have GCSE requirements. So this means that the whole process starts at 15 years old. And if you're not sure about your GCSE grade, just email universities or check UCAS to see if you reach the requirements or not. Okay, so well done. You passed high school, you smashed your GCSEs. Life's good. On Results Day, you go get your free food from Nando's or wherever. By the way, if you want to see where you can get free food, I've made videos on it. On Results Day, you can get bare food, free food from everywhere. So enjoy your summer because college is when the real work starts. Yep, getting them 7s, 8s and 9s, that's light work. A lot of people can get 7s, 8s and 9s. College is where the hard work starts. People who got 7s, 8s and 9s in, uh, in high school, sometimes they drop to Cs and Ds in, in college. So yeah, now's where the hard work starts. So obviously when you're in college, you need to make sure at the end of year 13, you get them A's and A stars. But I'll get to that because there's so much more you have to do beforehand. Okay, so the first thing you want to focus on is between year, after year 11, so in the summer, start of year 12, throughout year 12, try find work experience. If you don't have uh, connections to any dentists or doctors, finding work experience can be really hard. Like for me, I emailed dental, dental clinics around Manchester, in Manchester, Liverpool, Leeds. I was emailing everywhere. If I saw a clinic on the side, I'll call them, I'll walk in, I'll ask them, do you do work experience? I literally got one yes. Better than just ghosted me, like they aired me, like, okay, uh, at least at least email back saying nah, but now nah, they just didn't reply. I got one reply and they said, yeah, we'll give you work experience. They gave me one week. Thing is, a lot of unis actually have requirements that you need like one or two weeks work experience. This was before COVID. I don't know if it changed after COVID because obviously you couldn't get work experience in COVID. Dentists won't even go into work during COVID. You should also look for voluntary work over this time. So this is where you can implement and learn new skills that are useful for dentists and doctors. So for example, teamwork skills, communication, listening, leadership, even customer service. You're going to be chatting to people, social skills. These are all skills you can learn from volunteering, for example, at primary schools, community centres, charity shop. Over this time, also over this time, make sure you learn new skills such as the Rubik's Cube or cooking or drawing or an instrument something that you can use your hand quite a lot just so you can learn new skills make sure it's something that you use your hands for dentistry especially manual dexterity even the art aspect because there's an art aspect in dentistry you're using your hands at all times in dentistry so you need to have some sort of hand skills some sort of manual dexterity and so all of this with the work experience the skills the volunteering this is all to strengthen your personal statement because this is a very important part of you getting an offer from uni. So that's going to be like throughout year 12, you're going to be trying to do that. But majority of the focus in year 12 is actually going to be to do good in exams. The exams are going to be hard. You need to stay on top of your work from the start and make sure you smash all your exams. Get minimum Bs, As. I mean, you can get away with Cs and Ds there. 
just make sure you get the B's and A's in year 12 because and especially and especially at the end of year 12 in your AS exams or just your end of year mocks make sure you do well in them because the whole of year 12 especially the end of year exams determines your predictions at the start of year 13 and the important thing about these predictions is that these are what the university sees and that's what they base whether giving you an interview or not off of. So at the start of year, year 12, I was predicted BCC because of my GCSE grade. At the end of at the start of year 13, end of year 12, I got predicted A star AA. So you can see how much of a big difference one year can make. Okay, so you finish year 12, you do well in your exams, you've got some work experience, you've got volunteering, you've learned new skills. What do you do now over summer? The UCAT. Now the UCAT is possibly the hardest test you'll ever do. Uh, a lot of people can tell you that. Uh, you need about four to six weeks revision for it. I've made a whole video on the UCAT. It's the video before this one on my YouTube channel. Go watch it. It covers everything you need to know about the UCAT. So the thing about the UCAT is you either revise using Medify or Medentry. If you want to use Medentry, right now I know a lot of people use Medentry. If you want to use my Medentry link, there's one in the description. It'll just help me out. So this is the summer, year 12 to year 13. This UCAT revision, it just isn't that fun. However, everyone applying to medicine dentistry does eventually do that exam. And this is the reason why a lot of people don't apply because they get low scores and there's just no point of applying because once you're below a certain threshold, then you're not going to get an offer. However, there is ways of strategically applying to uni with low UCAT scores. So don't be demotivated if you do have a low UCAT score. You can go watch my video pre previously to see, uh, you can see my previous video to see how to actually apply with low UCAT score. Finally, you might also have to do the BMAT, but that's a bit later than the UCAT, but it's a similar thing. It's an entrance exam that you need to do that is very hard. Oh, from my experience, I found the BMAT harder than the UCAT. Okay, so now you've done the UCAT, you've started year 13, what's your main focus now? Personal statement. So you need to start writing your personal statement. I say give yourself two to three weeks to like, write it and make sure it's perfect. With medicine dentistry, you need to apply earlier than everyone else. Everyone else, their deadline is January 15th. Medical dental students, or the ones in college who want to apply, deadline is October 15th, so it's about two, three months beforehand. However, throughout this period of writing your personal statement, you need to make sure you stay on top of your year 13 work because you've still got that goal at the end to do well in your exams, in your A-levels. This whole two years, over these two years, you're revising so you can get them A's and A-stars at the end. This is everything you just have to do in between on top of your revision. So at this point, you're either 17 or 18. Uh, most people are going to be 17. You've got your personal statement written. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make many videos on how you can write personal statements, how to improve it. It'll be on my TikTok as well, study plate, go check it out. So now um, there's not much you have to do. You just wait to see if you got an interview. During this time, stay on top of your work, do your homework, do your revision, make sure you're getting high grades in the exams. So then you're waiting for them emails. You see, you get the email, UCAS has been updated. You're dreading it. You have to open that email and then you're either relieved or you're devastated. Either says, unfortunately, we can't give you an offer or uh, inv invitation to an interview, pick a date, what date, what time. It will either be online or in person, which I mean, if you're in Newcastle and you've got an interview down in Plymouth and it's in person, you've got a long journey. But well done. If you got an interview, only about 30 to 50% of applicants get an interview. But now you need to learn how to actually do the interviews. And this is another process of revision every single day for about 45 minutes a night that you need to do. I've written a whole interview book, 50 pages, has so many questions. People that used it last year said that they loved it and it helped them a lot in their interviews. This book I'm selling for £5 right now. During the interview season, it's going to be £8. So obviously, the sooner you get it, the cheaper it is. If there's not a link down below to buy it, just message me on Instagram at studyplate and I'll send it to you. Genuinely, this book, I put about five weeks of my time into writing this book and it's really useful. But with this interview, you have to do about 40 minutes of practice every night for about three weeks and then you go do the interview. But if, whilst you're doing all this, you also need to make sure you're revising, which is why it is so hard to become a dental, dentist or a doctor because... Like just in general, just revising for A-levels is so hard. Getting good grades in A-levels is so hard just by itself. But you have to do all this on top of it as well. And it's just like, how can someone do this? Like you have to be a genius able to do this. When I was applying, I was thinking, I can't do this. It's just too much. And every time I went to the dentist, if I went to a GP, I'd be like, I don't say it to them. I just think to myself, like, I respect how like, I did not know it was that hard to get to where you are right now. So you've done your interview. Uh, now you just wait to see if you've got an offer or not. So during this time, just revise for your A-levels. Focus on your A-levels. Even if you think your interviews aren't bad, make sure you smash your A-levels. Even if you don't get an offer, make sure you smash your A-levels. So you get an email from the university. Unfortunately, you have not got an offer. Or congratulations, you got an offer to study at the university of... Uh, your offer is this called UCAS or whatever. There's been an update on that. UCAS, go see you, your offer. 
AAA with an A in biology, A star AA with an A star in whatever in a science. So you got your offer, well done, because about 9 to 11% of applicants can get an offer. It's one of the hardest courses to get into, so well done. But if you if all four of your unis reject you, don't worry. Just make sure you smash your exams. Even if you got the offer, now that you got the offer, get the grades. If you don't get the grades, it's the biggest fumble of all time. You can't go through this whole process, get the offer, and then not get the grades. Like, come on, just make sure you get the grades. So A-level results day comes around and you got your grades, you got your triple A, you got your A stars, well done. Make sure you complete student finance, student accommodation, everything beforehand if you are going to uni. If not, take a gap year. Like so many students are gap year students. Some of the first years are older than me because they're gap year students. And like, you, you're very lucky. You'll be very lucky to get in first time around 18 years old starting uni. Uh, a lot of people with medical, medicine, dentistry take gap years and that's completely fine. In that year off, if you have got the A-level grade, you do need to do the UCAT again. Uh, probably apply the same personal statement or improve your personal statement a bit. Um, do interviews. And if you get the offer again, then you got the grades, you get in. You pretty much got unconditional after the offer. Just throughout this whole process, GCSEs, AS, A-level, make sure you don't have to reset anything because universities don't accept resets. A lot of universities don't accept resets. I'm not sure why, but it's just something they don't accept resets, which just makes the application even harder. So make sure you do well first time round. So now let's say you made it to uni. Well done, you're a student, dental student, medical student. You've done all this hard work to get here and now you're just one in a hundred. There's nothing special about you. Everyone else is just like you. But you have to make sure you get through every single year at dental and medical school because these are very, very hard years. A lot of students fail these years. Uh, they have to reset. Yep, the ones who did everything beforehand got here. They have to reset again and just try not to get kicked out. But yeah, I mean, even if you do fail a year, don't worry about it. A lot of people reset. It's only one year in a 50 year, 60 year career. Let's say you get through the five years of, of uni and now you're either a doctor or a dentist who is still a doctor. You're 23 years old or 24 or 25, depending on when you started uni. And bam, you go to work, foundation, F1, if you're a dentist, F1, F2, if you're a doctor, and then carry on with life. So from this video, you can see how hard it is to actually get in. I don't want this to demotivate you from going in. I'm just showing you the reality of it. Everyone does this. A lot of people go through this process. Don't feel like, oh, you have to be someone special. Look at my GCSE results. I had no like private tuition or nothing. And look, at I, I got in. If I got in, you can get in. Trust me, if I got in, you can get in too. Just you have to work for it. If you ask anyone in my college, if you ask any of my teachers, any of my friends, they'll say I was the hardest working guy in college. Uh, oh, girl, I was one of the hardest working people in college. All you have to do is work hard and you can get in. And if not, then it's just not meant to be. But this is the process of being a doctor dentist or medical doctor in the uk and maybe australia as well because i know they do the uk but yeah that's it